with that, I'm good to know. Yeah, now we are live in uh, uh, YouTube. Uh, uh, Mr. Suresh and Mr. Varikar muted. Yeah. Yeah. Now we are. Okay. So this I'm going on record now. Uh, we are going to the live in uh, so, uh, YouTube. I think I have the record coming. Yeah, I unmuted. Okay. Mr. Suresh and Mr. Varikar. Yeah. Yeah. Now we are live. Good. 130. Very good. So we are going to record on cloud. Yes, we are on the card now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, welcome to all the participants. We have touched uh, 120 plus now, and out of uh, 608 registration, I'm sure over the period, we will have uh, at least 50% plus from the registration participating, very important subject that we are talking about. So I'm very happy to say that 16 knowledge webinar series on, on the date of 17th October, starting at 11 o'clock. Uh, we have a wonderful panelist, and we have a keynote speaker, the Vice Chairman of uh, National Building Code, Mr. V. Suresh, who is going to give an opening remark. And we have very distinguished uh, a panelist, Mr. Thierry Krishnan, the code writer, who knows almost all the country's codes. And uh, we have Mr. Santosh Varik, the author of Namara Fire Act, and very knowledgeable person. And Abai, the most highly educated from the fire field, uh, the kind of Knowledge he carries, wonderful, very soft spoken. Uh, Mr. Abhay Purandre, the youngest uh, panelist in this uh, forum, is also there. So, welcome all of you, and uh, it's a great pleasure to uh, see you all here. And uh, just before we start, uh, I would like to tell um, our friends that we are going to start uh, three series, three web webinar series on pacifier protection, will be conducted by. Mr. Abhishek Chabra from UAE, from Dubai-based company. So most of you, most most of you know about National Building Code, the evolution of National Building Code, when it started, and how it, you know, various uh, revisions that happened in the past. And all those people who are connected to National Building Code are here. The person who started the National Building Code and being part of it, he spent almost uh, fifty uh, four years in the Bureau of Indian Standard in writing codes. So he's also here. That is none of them, none, none, none other than uh, keynote speaker, Mr. Vasudevan Suresh, uh, Mr. Uh, Suresh from Civil Engineering, Anna University, with over 55 years of professional experience in the housing infrastructure, rural and urban development, and built environment sector. He has worked in Tamil Nadu Works Department for one and a half year later in Bureau of Indian Standard for 12, 12 and a half years and was directly associated with formulation, formulation of leading national standards and codes and National Building Code is, and is now the Vice Chairman of National Building Code Sectional Committee and Chairman Housing Planning and Prefabricated Construction Sectional Committee of BIS. Is a former Chairman and Managing Director of Housing and Urban Development Corporation and is the current chairman of National Indian Green Building Council and vice chairman of NBC. And there is, you know, there is a series of award uh, he has received over the 55 years and it is highlighted here. One that I would like to uh, talk about is the eminent engineer award. 
and architectural in award an engineer of the year, uh, of the year by institution of fire engineer is a notable reward that he has received in the uh, 2001 and 2006 so ladies and gentlemen i would request mr vishuresh to give his opening remarks in this 17th knowledge series over to you sir thank you very much dominic a very happy good morning to you all the distinguished participants to the program and i find that the number has already increased 171 now in the short two, two to three minutes time increase 121 and i'm sure we'll by the time we catch up we may easily come to around 300 shortly and to my fellow panelists uh, uh, the uh, veteran mr tra krishnan who has been in this particular sector for over four decades in uh, standardization work and uh, on the fire uh, protection standardization regulatory work etc Varik Saab, um, who has also been a veteran in the uh, Maharashtra Fire Service and also in the uh, trend setting act that they brought out and which is uh, uh, produced impact. And uh, Purandare Saab contributing in a very large way to uh, the uh, uh, initiative in Gujarat and other consultancy work. And very happy to have all of you to join in this particular one. Uh, and uh, since it's going to be an open opening remarks from my side, uh, NBC is by now known to everybody. The latest, after the 70 version, the 83 version, 2005 version, is the fourth version, which is the 2016 version, which has come. Every The moment 2016 version of NBC has come over there, it's also time when building construction activity has received phenomenal amount of impetus of not only all types of buildings, but also heights of building increasing from what it was earlier, 30, 40 years back to maybe around 10, uh, 10 story to 20 story, 20 story, maybe 30 to 40, maybe 20 years back, now even coming to 50 stories and beyond that. And all types of complex building, what is vanilla building of one type of occupancy has increased now to mixed occupancies of different nature in different flows coming from the lower to the upper over there. And the component of many buildings having the retail component as well as the multiplex and other related things also added to a lot of value on that. Housing has become a very major area where the apartments are really caught up in a very large way. And then, then we got into the larger component of the healthcare and hospitals where the fire safety aspects became important because movement of the people within the building because they are either not in the able condition, they are either in a coma condition or an ICU condition, various other conditions are there. So requirements in respect of all those occupancies where the movement of the people is restricted or by design, they can't move. And therefore, how do you take care of such situations in a large way uh, from fire safety point of view become an important one and more important life safety component uh, in a very large way. Uh, You'll be very happy to know after the National Building Code was so fourth version got released, 2016 version got released, the part four on National Building Code is the one part which has received the maximum amount of attention because that's one part which has become mandatory. Mandatory means everybody has got to follow while the remaining parts has got a recommendatory status where it will be a guiding document. You may use it or you may use the guidance. Part four is one which is made compulsory, not by the National Building Code by, by itself, but by the regulatory authorities, which are all the state, fire, and rescue, and emergency service. I'm using the three words because different state has got different ways. Fire services, fire and rescue services, fire rescue and management, uh, emergency service, etc. All of them are the one going to deal with the implementation along with the municipal corporation or a municipality. The compliance is going to be looked by the chief fire officer of the city, either from the city side or on the uh, uh, state side. So all of them are made NBC uh, provisions mandatory. That means every line and every word of the particular clause in part four becomes sacrosanct. So therefore, Every user, all the builders, all your developers, all your consultants, your architects, your civil engineers, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, firefighting, the consultants who deal with all the different aspects of building, each have to go through like a tooth comb to find that it doesn't affect. So therefore, 
this is the one mm. document which has got large amount of comments received after the building code was released in 2016 every day there will be some come because the each one is utilizing that part of the thing they suddenly find some little difficulty in implementing that some clarification required their their misinformation disinformation lack of information has to be conveyed through the right information so that they will all understand that so therefore Uh, uh, the panel dealing with the fire protection, of which fortunately we are the district. I am a member, and Krishna sir is a member, and so also is the uh, Varik sir. So three of the members of the panel dealing with fire protection are continuously meeting, seeing the comments. We have received about 250 pages of comments, and committee must have sat through two full days. Even the minutes of the meeting is around 200 pages. Minutes of the meeting, what it shows the. depth to which people have gone into the whole document because this is one part of the building code which is now seeing the light of the day and implementation is 100% pakka and that's very good and that's also an area where large number of conferences and seminars have been organized not only by uh, various bodies that are indian to architects the institution of engineers institution of fire engineers fsi fpai Uh, plus all the other body associated with consulting civil engineers there are there is in the forum where nbc part 4 is not discussed in every alternate week every alternate once in two weeks there will be one happening in india i'm talking about the last four years so therefore it has already now become a very important popular event uh, there we are going to touch 200 people on the event already and uh, that's a very happy augury and what i'm going to do now is uh it will want me an opportunity to tell what the building code everybody knows that what i am going to indicate to you what are the critical areas which are now receiving attention when you say people are uh, giving asking comments from the regulator side fire authority side they want to implement rightly or the user side builders and developers or the or the professionals dealing with that are they either the architects and engineers dealing with the three dimensional space into which fire safety has to come in or the people dealing with all the services utility services which is contributing to fire spread air conditioners lift installation electrical installation etc etc so each one of them what comments are or users of the particular one what are the views on that broadly what i'll do in the next few minutes time in my opening remarks uh, is to uh, tell on that one of the most important is what about the applicability of the thing i'm sure a lot of questions have already come and this is a session where more than presentation will be q and a session will be following in a big way applicability means not only buildings beyond a certain height which we indicated there also even building a lower height but if the area is more like it can be an assembly building or a hospital building or a school building even if it doesn't go beyond 15 meters applicability will come on that into a large way that's the first aspect on applicability of the code applicability means all contents are applicable applicability from getting a fire noc from the fire authorities as part of the building plan approval process let us get it very clear otherwise all the technical requirements planning requirements is applicable everybody has got to comply but they don't have to specifically submit the particular one for those uh, clause thing for uh, approval to for the local body oblique the fire authorities that's a cl first clarity second most important component is in respect of the issues on the zoning and type of construction and the fire resistance rating i'm putting it all together so that the time will be is shorter i'll cover that particular thing in a very large way and that's an important thing on how the buildings are done in various fire zones especially don't put those with very high fire severity and fire load like industrial hazards and other related particular thing close to residential other zone where the fire severity is smaller so a sensitive aspect of the zoning aspect is a one area some questions have come and what type of occupancy is to be permitted for each of the building even now that mixed use occupancy has come into a very large way what all things can come what requirements should be done between one occupancy uh, if you have occupancy of different nature what will govern for you to decide for the particular fire resistance rating or between one occupancy and another so that one occupancy does not affect the working of the other group is an important one fire resistance rating is a very important component for all the elements of the construction be it walls or roofs or slabs or uh, uh, beams etc etc plus both uh, both not only the fire uh, 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 load bearing or non load bearing other uh, required including for compartments etc so that another major area on which the comments are come 
glass is another major area which has come into the system. I hope all of you are aware that the National Building Code of India has got an exclusive document on structural glazing coming, which is on part six, section uh, eight, first building code in the world. And your code writers in the NBC have gone out of the way to ensure when you have glass enclosure coming over there, whatever openings you put, it was never there earlier. So the openings are coming over there into the court. A lot of questions on what should be the type of glass to be used? How do you deal with the opening? And that's another set of questions which are coming in this particular area. Exits are a very major component in respect of rooms to the doors, to the corridors, to the staircase, to the ramp, till you get out of the particular building. How do you design occupant load, travel distances? How do you design unit exit ways? What type of thing, handrails, uh, trades? And how do you reach till the outside area? How do you design that in the very minute detail? All access, egress, and exit requirements is a very, very major area, especially the type of uh, benefits that will come in a sprinkler building with certain amount of uh, additional thing for travel distance or other related things is another major area which has come. Compartmentation is another major area. Uh, there was a very major seminar which was organized uh, by uh, uh, Dominic uh, on uh, first time compartmentation came in this study and I'm very happy that that topic is an important component in the building over there. NBC has covered that into very, very minute detail of containing the particular thing as if they are enclosed spaces beyond which you put the right level of blocks. So it, it doesn't, the conflagration spread of the fire doesn't take place in a large way. Compartmentation is a very major component into which some of the queries have come into it in a very large way. Fire tower, a very interesting component which has been brought in into the 2016 version. And again, I've attracted very well received by the users and also being applied into a very large way. And that I'm sure some questions are also coming in this particular area. And the next major one is, why don't we do it for different, because they're not understood fully, for different uh, occupancies and different. And that's exactly what table seven has done. The table 23 in 2005 versions are table seven coming. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to indicate that it's one of the finest documents that has been created over there where all the occupancies are there on the left-hand side for different heights, lower heights, smaller heights, medium heights, slightly larger and very tall building. For each of those occupancies, different heights of building, what was the thing in the horizontally, the thing required in respect of all the firefighting system, either you're the wet riser or a, a hose reel or other related thing or sprinkler required, detector required, manual or automatic, all those details, like a school baby, that four pages of table seven covers everything that's required. If you are master of table seven of the NBC, you are master of everything because that all thought process got and with the various notes under that, that will exactly know in every building, depending upon the nature of occupancy and the heights of building, what should be the type of uh, fire uh, fighting equipment, the fire protection system needed, the detection system needed, alarm system needed, water storage needed, et cetera, et cetera, are covered into very minute detail in that. Many people do not know this particular thing I just thought is indicating. Since buildings cover all requirement is also another important thing called the seismic brazing, because you also have uh, 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 the places covered with very high wind load. You also having having a seismic uh, requirement. And how do you design for high rise building the seismic bracing to be done so that all your installations and all will also be able to take a response system on those areas is another area of coming. And uh, the related thing on uh, the new component automatic deluge system with deluge walls and nozzles, which uh, come into our chapter on. Uh, compartmentalization as well as on basement has also come in for very good uh, queries which has come, clarity has come into that particular area. Pump capacity, the type of pressure required is another major, I'm sure Mr. Krishnan will be opening out into that. These are very, very important aspects. If it has got to have the pressurization issue, the type of water pumping capacity, the type of pressure required for each of them are very, very important areas, which also requires to be kept into view in a very large way. And I'm sure we people will be opening into that. Differently able people, either within the same building, physically and other handicapped people or hospitals, et cetera, et cetera, uh, or school, schools which are young children and medium children, what do you do with the new education policy? You know, all of them are coming over there. How do you deal with that? 
Supreme Court has already ordered after 100 students died in Kanchipuram fire over there. Clear orders of fire safety requirements of school building into very large. I hope you're all aware of it. So I would advise that in addition to part four requirements, which has covered there, part three of the National Building Code has 118 pages of coverage for differently abled people, how the spaces have to be done in terms of various requirements of movement and other related things. Kindly read that together in a large way. In the respect of the electrical cables and all, FR, FRLS cables and other related things, detailed guidance are available in respect of those which cannot contribute to fire, we can save in a large way. Smoke extraction is another major component, which is also come into the uh, uh, application in a very large way. And I'm sure this will also be uh, discussed in a large, in, in a, yeah, when you discuss the uh, provision in a large way. And uh, very, very importantly, I have one of the things that come over is the right link in the building permit stages. This is a general one. You do in the beginning, along with the building plan, all the fire safety requirements and life safety to incorporate it, which will be approved by the, uh, by the fire authorities through an NOC or whichever way, based on which only a building permit is made available and what are all the things to be given, that's an administrative provision. Number two, when the whole building is completed, civil wise, all the equipments are installed. And when they submit the completion certificate for occupancy permit stages there, again, the NOC will come from the fire authority. And that has also been brought in over there in a very detailed manner. And therefore, how do you deal with that? And then the fourth area that comes over is the, what, you got, what will happen to a building? After the post completion occupancy is there, is the sprinkler working, detector working? the fire extinguisher working, et cetera, et cetera. You have the assets and facility management coming part 12 of the National Building Code to keep them continuously 24 by seven in an operational gear. How do you do that? That's a very major component to do it. Installing every requirement is one thing. Installing is one. Whether it is continuously working or not, performance is an important component coming on that. And therefore, that just brought in over there of what is called periodic renewal certificate. Some people want to do once in a year, Many people say even once in three or four years, good enough. For certain types of building, you can decide on periodicity, how you want to do that. And the idea is to see that your building is safe at all points of time. What does it know? Because large number of fires that has taken place there, at that point of time, the sprinkler doesn't work, detector doesn't work, alarm doesn't work, water is not there in the sum. Now, this doesn't go, it's not good at all. So therefore, all these aspects come into it. And this will bring you the last component, my closing point of the day, is what is called fire audit. How do you do in the, after the buildings are completed, we are really trying to find out, just now you go to the doctors at very regular intervals to know whether you're fine or not, to have a third party audit of your particular building from fire safety point, that's called the fire audit. You can have a structural audit for structural sufficiency of building beyond a certain year. Is it is still strong and stable? Our fire audit is our equally important component. We brought in a very interesting component on that is linked with the fire drill and other related aspects there. But that's also an important component which will help us to know what is the health. Health means real physical health of all the installation. Which are the things which require to be replacement? Which are the requests that should be uh, modified or changed or uh, require some changes to be done, et cetera, et cetera, depending upon the change. Because the reason why I'm trying to say is that buildings, one, they are completed, the occupant certainly is required. When you start occupying that, large number of changes do happen. You just never envisaged earlier. You thought that the whole space is going to be one occupancy. You always put some other occupancy with a higher fire load. All the interiors come over there. Otherwise, we get a floor which is all bare floor, 20,000 square feet, 50,000 square feet, a bare floor is what you give an occupant survey. But then the interiors come in over there with the furniture, furnishing, uh, tapestry, uh, carpets, whatever. The fire load has increased phenomenally. So therefore, and many so-called exits here plant, they will block it over there. So that can only be known during that particular phase. So therefore, this renewal certificate and the inspection by the fire team and the Audit is an important component onto which also we should spend a little amount of time because everybody has got to put their hands together in one way positively for the clap to take place. And this is not an area of policeman versus fire policeman versus the builder. It is not one changing the other. It's all working together for the safety of the life of the people in that as well as the building to be safe in a positive way. So ladies and gentlemen, I would not like to take any further time. You have three distinguished panelists. They will open out. Then the Q&A will start. We'll all join the large number of questions that have come over there. And I'm very happy 
that even though I started about 170 people, now only 220 people are already logged in there. It shows very wide, uh, uh, what can I say, uh, the type of demand for the particular topic. And thank you very much, Dominic, for the uh, opportunity given to open out. I'll join towards the end for the Q&A later. And all best wishes to my distinguished panelists. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. There's so much energy in the morning. And ladies and gentlemen, it was uh, Mr. V. Suresh, uh, the person who's been uh, part of the National Building Code since 54 years. So I now move on to the distinguished uh, panelist, uh, the eminent panelist, Mr. T.R.A. Krishnan. I would always say the code writer and fire safety advisor, very senior person who was part of the TAC, uh, Tariff Advisory Committee. Later, it was uh, disabled for various reasons. And But in those days, uh, if you want to have an insurance, you need to have a TAC approval certificate to cover. So later, he became the code writer. He was instrumental in bringing out water mist system regulation for the first time in the country in 1992 active member in Bureau of Indian Standards since 1979 and drafted, revised several Indian standards like smoke detector, sprinkler and codes for sprinkler and spray system, fire alarm system, code of practices, etc. for Bureau of Indian Standard. He's a member in several committee of BAS dealing with fire and life safety, including National Building Code since 1993 most active member in the revision of National Building Code 2016, addressed several seminar on fire regulations, NBC complaints as fire safety audited, insurance requirement, etc. on other topics relevant to fire and life safety, risk management, etc. Third party auditor may for many IRS hotels, buildings, Reliance Industry, ITC, and etc. and etc. is today an independent auditor. He has an in depth knowledge on LPCB, NFPA, UL, FM. You, uh, whenever he's there, I, I, once I visited his uh, a home, uh, one of the rooms is converted as a library, and I could see every country's building codes are stuck in the shelves. So whenever I ask question, he takes Australian code, whether it is a uh, New Zealand code, whether it's the Canadian code, he has everything. He is so passionate about the codes and best practices. He's widely traveled across the globe and today is a highly respected safety audit and inspection for various institutions like Mantralaya and also he's investigated uh, many uh, buildings. Uh, that is Mr. T.R. Christian, who is currently based out of Coimbatore. Sir, before I move on to the other panelists, do you have anything to say a few words? Me? Oh, uh, good day to everybody. It's a really nice uh, on uh, part of Mr. Dominic to arrange such an interaction. I'm sure uh, it's going to be <laughs> quite useful for everybody, including the code writer, including the authorities. Everybody, it will. Uh, I have seen some good questions. So we are going to deal with all the questions. And I hope. Uh, we, have, we will be able to uh, improve the standards further uh, to be in line with the international courts. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That's very sweet and short. And uh, welcome to this session, sir. I'll move on to the next panelist, uh, Mr. Santosh Eswarik. He's also an author and code writer. So uh, the chief fire officer and fire advisor to MIDC and fire service director of Maharashtra Fire Service. is a science graduate. Fire Engineering from National Fire Service College, Nagpur, and MBA in Finance and Law Graduate. I always, when I read his profile, he's, he's everything. He's an engineer, he's a graduate, he's a uh, businessman, he's a finance, and he's also a lawyer. Very few find in a fire officer who has all these corners. So I need to be careful when I'm talking to him. So. He has what, 28 years of uh, experience in uh, fire prevention protection. He has served in various positions in MIDC fire services. One of the <laughs> architects in drafting India's first state Maharashtra Fire Act 
an expert in firefighting of various occupancies, implementation of fire prevention and life safety measures as per National Building Code of India. He has successfully handled various industrial projects, special townships, SEZs, and IT parks in Maharashtra. Our dear friend, Santosh Eswari. Sir, few words from you, sir. Thank you very much, Dominic, for that introduction. And NBC part four, it is very dynamic code. As Mr. V. Suresh sir already narrated various provisions about the part four. The specifically NBC provisions are recommendatory and through the fire acts of the state or the development control rules of municipal authorities or the special planning authorities or any other statute, it can be made mandatory. So that is the first thing. And considering the new challenges of high-rise building, industrialization, and urbanization in India, it is uh, um, it's important to imp uh, have the implementation of the code in total aspects, not in the particular aspect. So considering that it is the responsibility of every stakeholder, right from the developer, architect, uh, fire consultant, plumbing consultant, HVAC, electrical ones, to implement the uh, codal provisions uh, for the building to make uh, to save the precious human life and property. Thank you. Over thank to you, you Dominic. Much, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. Lovely to mm -hmm. have you on this uh, panel as a panelist in this uh, session. And I have next uh, Abhay Purandare, the ever smiling and very calm, always well balanced uh, personality and man who has fantastic you know, uh, education on fire and life safety. I was just reading it out. Even I, I, I was thinking he's a graduate in fire, but I was very surprised to see he's a, a graduate from mechanical engineer fire protection, University of Maryland College uh, Park, which is well-known, respected university in US for fire officers. And his fellowship from Institution of Fire Engineers UK. And also his father is highly respected fire officers from Gujarat. I remember when I was a president of FSAI, we awarded lifetime achievement for his father. The father and son, the two eyes of India in fire. Wonderful to have you here, sir. I'll just read out your further uh, profile. You're a fire and life safety consultant providing fire engineering and life safety related services and advisors to the clients in India, Middle East, both in industrial and building sector. Carrying out review of fire and life safety strategy, reports and plans, fire detection protection, smoke management drawings, and advising on related technical matters, providing experts and performance-based solution for non-compliant and complex issues related to fire and life safety. He specialized in training programs on fire and life safety codes and practices, fire protection, fire prevention, safety topics, tailor-made for target audience. He's expert in fire investigation and fire scene reconstruction for fire incident with comprehensive report covering hypothesis, related calculations and modeling, etc. I'm so glad to have the four senior most experts in the country. Mr. V. Suresh, uh, Thierry Christian, Santosh Warik, and Nabai. I can't expect better or in a panelist uh, other than three. So wonderful to have you all, sir. I'm sure Mr. Abhay Purandare has a, a small slides for you all. So I will give this, I'll share the screen to Abhay. Abhay, over to you. Uh, thank you, Dominic. And uh, uh, thank you for this opportunity to interact with uh, such a large audience. Uh, the, it's a small uh, presentation that I've compiled, uh, seven, eight slides, but uh, this was uh, in response to the questions that were received. So I thought that certain things uh, uh, can be made clear before we begin, because it may not be possible to answer all questions. So I'll just quickly run through this. Uh, it will take maybe three, four minutes. Uh, so one is that, uh, as you all know, we are not uh, very well placed as far as the fire safety is concerned. Uh, this is the average number of fires for a five-year period. Uh, and you can see there, uh, we are there. There are 13 countries which have between uh, 1 lakh to 6 lakh fires. And we are there at number two. 
Uh, more concerning is this, the average number of fire deaths in the same period. And you can see that we are right there on top along with some other countries. So this should be a matter of concern uh, for all of us as a country. It's not just the regulators or the code writers whose job it is to look at this. It's for every one of us. And uh, this is a document on Global Resilience Index of Nations, which rates India's risk quality. And uh, it rate, rates India at 54 out of 110 countries. So we are approximately halfway. Uh, and uh, definitely there's a lot of scope for improvement. One of the risk quality factors which is considered is the fire risk quality. And you will see here that the quality and enforcement of a country's building code with respect to fire-based design is 2% of the fire risk quality. So that's why the NBC part four becomes very important uh, because uh, the better is the implementation, the better will be our fire risk quality. So, uh, and the comment that is given in this report says that the key challenge for India will be to ensure widespread enforcement of its updated code which would improve its fire risk quality and natural hazard risk quality. So that's what we are facing today. And just to give a small idea about uh, how we go about, so these are the different fire safety components that we normally address when we are talking of a code. So fire prevention, protection, implementation, <laughs> and response. And you will see that uh, this is a, just a scale which uh, is not uh, specific but a general scale and you will see that we are there. And this level of safety is determined by society. Society meaning all of us. And different countries will have different acceptable levels of safety depending on their outlook and resources. For example, a country like USA has a higher acceptable level of safety than us. So they would demand more from uh, the designers, more from the installers. But we need to at least ensure that whatever our codes write, we need to meet that, right? So it could happen that uh, you could be slightly less in fire protection or compartmentation, but then if I have a better response or if I have better fire prevention, I could overcome those problems, right? But it should not be a situation where I'm not meeting any of the components that are specified by the codes, unfortunately, which is happening now. And this is what we need to strive to improve this and ensure that we meet at least the basic minimum levels that the code uh, specifies, right? And the code specifies the minimum level. There is no, no limit if you want to go beyond that. And of course, there is some cost and some effort involved in maintaining that required level of safety. And uh, I'm sure as a responsible country, we should, as a responsible society, we should be willing to accept that. So uh, as uh, Mr. Suresh mentioned and Mr. Varik sir also clarified that NBC is a model code and needs to be formally accepted by states for implementation. So the state has to pass an act saying that uh, yes, uh, the, we are uh, we are going to use NBC Part Four for our building uh, design and uh, compliance, right? So the onus of implementation is on states as far as safety is a state subject. Uh, uh, this was uh, earlier. Now many states have uh, said that they will implement part four in uh, total. So there are some states which refer to table seven. Uh, some states which say, okay, we will uh, in their uh, DCRs, they will say, okay, we will refer to this clause of NBC part four for compartmentation or for structural fire protection. But there are some states who say that, no, we'll adopt part four in total. And that's a good sign because there is no confusion there. And that is what we want that ultimately all states should uh, be able to adopt part four. Right, and improving the level of acceptance and implementation is imperative if we wish to improve our fire statistics, right? And the purpose of a code is served only upon its full acceptance and implementation by stakeholders. And importantly, unless the code provisions and the underlying concepts are explained to stakeholders, they are unlike to appreciate its importance in creating a fire safe society. So that's what is happening currently. People don't understand why a certain clause is written that way. But when you understand the underlying concept, the logic behind it, then it becomes much more easier to accept. And that's what we want to do. 
right? And influential committees uh, such as developers, architects, regulatory authorities need to be targeted. So with this, I'll stop my uh, presentation here and uh, request Dominic to take over. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Abhay. Uh, thank you for give that, giving the slides on highlighting on the important of the, the question that we received and we are going to handle it. So I'll now open this uh, forum to a question answer. Uh, most of the participants may be aware that uh, we are invited uh, question answer uh, at the time of invitation. So we have received uh, almost uh, 170 questions. So uh, from each individuals and it could be more when I multiply that into two. So uh, we have exactly one and a half hours to take these questions. Uh, we will uh, try to make the answer as crisp as possible. And uh, I probably indicate who could uh, answer if I'm uh, maybe wrong, the other panelists can uh, take up these questions. So the first question of the day on the question for part four, fire and life safety in BC 2016 is from Mr. BK Chowdhury. The question number one, criteria of issuing NOC for fire safety for a building less than nine meter height and less than 500 square meter area wise, is it essential to obtain NOC for such type of building having 20 bed hospital? I would request our friend, Mr. Santosh Warik to take up this question. So the building approval is a local authorities or the state authorities subject. As per the provisions of development control rules and the state fire act, every building has to be approved, whichever is coming in that particular area. So before granting building plan approval, the provisional fire approval from the fire services is required as per the development control rule of that area. So every building uh, plan approval is, uh, before granting plan approval, fire NOC is granted. For the buildings uh, below nine meters as specified in NBC, it is not covered, but the minimum requirement for the fire extinguishers or depending upon the type of uh, occupancy, the additional requirement can be specified uh, by the fire authorities based upon the development control rules or potential fire risk of, of that particular building. As far as the nursing homes are concerned, there is a separate statute which covers the nursing homes uh, by the local authorities. And they required fire approval from the fire authorities, then health officers approval for uh, opening such uh, healthcare uh, facilities. So for that, minimum fire protection requirement are specified by the every fire department. Uh, so that is the requirement why the fire approval is required for nursing homes and the buildings above uh, nine, uh, below nine meters. And minimum requirements like extinguishers or detection can be provided for such type of uh, occupancies. Thank you, sir. Uh, the next question to Mr. Tiare Krishnan uh, from Vikram K. Kalba. Is a director and senior risk consultant. Uh, the question number one: While Table Seven in NBC provides guidance for fire, water tank, and pump, it is not clear whether this is for hydrant system, a sprinkler system, or for combined system. While IS 15105 gives much higher tank and pump uh, uh, pump room. Clarity is required since the provisional NOC is not effectively specify the tank capacity. I think there's a, some uh, typo error here. So I'm sure uh, Mr. T.R.A. Christian would have read this question, the balance. I have some issues in because over time they're going to begin on my question here. Over to Mr. T.R.A. Christian. Yeah, uh, the table seven, if you see, we have given uh, separate pumping, the pumping capacities uh, for hydrant, piping capacity, pumping capacity for sprinkler in the notes. If you can see the tables, we will only refer you to the uh, notes. When you go to the note, you know which is for hydrant system, what, how much, I mean, what capacity for hydrant system, what capacity for sprinkler system. They are already specified. Of course, the tank capacity is common. Uh, as you all uh, know and appreciate, the, the National Building Code 
we try to provide only minimum requirements for any building, minimum requirements. They are not the uh, ultimate requirements. They are minimum requirements. So if you want detailed requirements, you have to go to the concern standards, like what is referred here, IS 15105 for sprinklers and IS 13039 for hydrant system and so on. See, it is not possible to bring all those requirements into a national building code. See, the table seven covers only minimum requirements for pumping capacity and water capacity. And uh, contrary to what is stated in the question, separate capacities for hydrant, separate capacity for sprinklers pump are mentioned in the notes. Uh, maybe the, uh, the question, you may have overlooked to see the notes. And secondly, what I would try to uh, stress initially before the attempting to answer all the other questions here, as a part of the National Building Court Core Committee, what I would suggest that there are almost about 47 standards directly or indirectly related to the National Building Code. So National Building Code can give only reference to those standards. They cannot specify the requirements, what is expected in the NBC. The moment you ask for a question on sprinkler or a curtain, water curtains like that, you have to, you should go back, you should go to the concerned standard rather than coming to NBC because NBC cannot bring everything. NBC can say, NBC will only say you have to provide sprinklers, but how to provide sprinklers that you have to go to the concerned standard. So water capacities, pumping capacities for sprinkler system, hydro system, they are already mentioned. Kindly, please go through the notes. So thank you, sir. Again, uh, to Mr. Uh, T.R.A. Krishnan, sir. The question is from Rakesh Kumar Rajput. According to NBC part four, fire hydrant height should be 0.9 meters. And in Indian standard, it is one meter to 1.2 meter, which is correct. Sir, again, I'm telling you, NBC, there was no mention about the regarding the height. I don't know where from you got it. And even if you get it, uh, you, as I already told, you have to go to the standard concern. NBC will not specify any uh, individual requirements. So 0.9 meters, I don't know where, it, where, where from you have taken it, maybe uh, an old, old version or whatever it is. If it is there, then kindly we will stand corrected that you have to go to the uh, IS 13039 for that. NBC cannot uh, specify what is the requirement. Okay. Um, I'll move on to the, uh, the other questions. Uh, I have again, Mr. Uh, Umeshwar Rao, I'll take this question uh, uh, later after uh, Abai. Uh, this question is for both uh, Abai, Purandre, Santosh, and Tiara Christians. So this is from Mohammed Rizwan. So it's a very lengthy question. So uh, I'm sure uh, I can read out uh, only two questions at this moment. When the twin ident valve is considered, there is no mention of its selection in NBC 2016. The second question. What is the minimum riser size for sprinkler system? Please tell the basis with regard to codes and standard as the same is not mentioned in NBC 2016. I think this question is for Mr. T.R.A. Krishna. Yeah, in fact, NBC 2016, uh, the twin hydrant valve is not covered. It is not considered at all. In fact, uh, none of the states in India, they are going for uh, double outlet valves. I mean, single walls with two outlets. I mean, so that, that question is answered because there is no mention 2016 minutes is rightfully it's not mentioned. The second is what the minimum size, riser size for sprinkler system, please tell the basis with respect to codes. Minimum riser size in sprinkler system, it goes by hydraulics. We cannot say it. it so it cannot, you cannot put minimum means uh, even two inches sometimes if suppose it's only ground plus one floor, even two inches can be a riser. It, is, it, is, uh, it depends upon the how large the building is. So it is not possible to mention. So you have to see the building, how many floors, what's the area and number of sprinklers required. Then what the floor required, then calculate the riser size. Minimum, according to me, should not be less than two inches. Okay, uh, the next question uh, again, uh, for this is for Mr. Santoshwari from Mohammed uh, Rizal. Uh, what is the minimum and maximum flow and pressure required at nozzle in water curtain system as per, sorry, this is, must be again T.R.A. Christian uh, because uh, he's written the quotes for the water maze. Sir, he's asking what is the minimum and maximum flow pressure required at nozzle in water cutting system as per the NBC 2016? I, I correct the question. It is not only this system. It is what he's asking is uh, curtain, water curtains. 
So oh, what? So water curtains uh, actually water curtain sprinklers are normally used for exposure protection. Or probably come now uh, the compartmentation also has come with the uh, water curtain sprinklers. But mostly in our service, I have seen that water curtain sprinklers are used only for exposure protection. That uh, that means one hazardous building and uh, is uh, very situated very close to the another uh, differentially uh, I mean hazardous building. Then the external wall openings on one side uh, we we have to provide. Curtain sprinklers to see that uh, the fire doesn't spread from one building to the other building. That is the principle. So this uh, water curtain sprinklers was not covered so far in India. We have not given any technical details of that, though it is it was in work for quite some time. We have not covered it in our sprinkler standard. But now now you refer to the new IS one five one zero five, which is already approved, which uh, is supposed to be uh, uh, supposed to have come out from uh, BIS any time. So you can see uh, all the details which you want. I don't want to go through in detail because there are plenty of questions. I would only su suggest you go through class 8.5 in that code, which gives every detail what you want. So this uh, question again to Mr. P. R. Krishnan from Anuj Agarwal. Mm. Why are we still insisting the capacity of UGSR with height, height of building, rather it should only be related to the type of type and usage as architect and engineers take advantage of these discrepancies in the code with convenient, uh, convenience to the fire, is it, is it more, uh, fire department. Yeah. No, height of the building, is so, so we have to take into consideration height of the building because height of the building decide, decides what is the uh, how much pressure is required? What is the head it should generate? So height of the building, we cannot omit. I agree, even layout and uh, uh, the nature of process, nature of occupancy, all those things also have to be seen, but we cannot ignore height for a specific reason which I mentioned. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. The next question to Mr. Uh, Santosh Wari from Krishna Rao. What is the right way of calculating the floor occupancy as per the code. So are you there, Mr. Santosh? Uh, yeah. yeah. The floor occupancy means occupant load is specified in the National Building Code. And uh, total means occupant load, it is uh, the principle is how the person is going to use that space. For example, if you are using an educational building, so only you are going to sit in particular uh, bench for uh, some time and only in recess you are utilizing some uh, other activities and you are coming out of it. So it requires a minimum space. But in case of residential, it is 12.5 uh, uh, square meters per person. So where you have a living room, you have a kitchen, you have bedroom. So various activities, sleeping accommodation is there then cooking accommodation, uh, cooking facilities are there and sit-outs are there. So a person utilizing more space for different type of activities. So it occupant uh, load for residential is 12.5. In case of uh, office building also sit-out areas, meeting areas, then circulation areas. So uh, occupant load is calculated as a 10 square meter per person. So it is different for different activities. So total gross area, floor plate area divided by number of occupants. So that way we have to calculate uh, the total occupant uh, floor area divided by occupant load. So that is number of occupants will come out in that particular floor. So that is a simple rule uh, given in National Building Code to calculate the occupant load. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, next question to Mr. Abhay Purandare. Is there any fire requirement for underpass pedestrian tunnel? Bracket, no transit, only for pedestrian road crossing. Let's say tunnel length is 100 meters. Kindly guide and explain. Abhay, you unmute yourself. Uh, it depends on where the tunnel is. If the tunnel is, uh, say, in a public place where there is not likely to be any risk, because of the only uh, probability of a fire occurring in such areas is due to arson when somebody deliberately sets fire. Otherwise, there is no fire load in uh, such occupancy. So there is no chance of a fire taking place. 
but yes if the, this tunnel was joining two uh, buildings in the parliament complex uh, then i would think of uh, providing some sort of fire protection for that tunnel or if it was in uh, the rbi head office or the pentagon then probably that uh, tunnel would require to be protected using fire protection but if it is an area that is being used in a public place which is if the tunnel is open from both sides uh, there is no likelihood of any fire uh, happening there because there is no fuel available there then i don't think you need any fire protection for that i think some clarification is given for the uh, metro related aspects on that some aspects of the tunnels are coming the additional fire protection requirements are covered so i'd advise them to have a look at that okay go forward uh again the question again abai for kitchen yeah. say 100 square meter fire protection what kind of suppression is required can you use class k extinguisher as per national building code 26 uh, then, again uh, probably okay. the local yeah the local dcrs will specify what you require but if it is 100 meter square then it's obviously a commercial kitchen and for most commercial kitchens there is a requirement to provide uh, a wet chemical uh, fix system uh, extinguishers may not be enough for such a large kitchen abhay one more question to you while calculating basement area for fire curtain compartmentation Yeah. Can the basement area or pump room or ventilation room area in basement all to be included? Uh, no, they should not be included because they will be separate from the basement by fire-rated construction. So if you have a pump room, obviously that pump room is going to be separated from the basement area using fire-rated construction. So it will not uh, be used for calculating the compartment area. Okay. Thank you, Abhay. The uh, next question is for Mr. Santosh Warik. How to calculate wa fire water tank if we consider separate hydrant and sprinkler system as per IS standard? I think TRA sir will be. Oh, sorry, this is TRA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is for TRA. So again, I'll read out this for Mr. TRA question. Uh, What is the question, please? Uh, Viber. This is from Viber. how to calculate fire water tank if we consider separate hydrant and sprinkler system as per is standards no it is a hydrant system as per is 13039 specifies uh, what is the what's the capacity of the water tank for various types of hazards low hazard ordinary hazard i um, mean moderate hazard high hazard a b and storage hazard etc pumping capacity as well as how many what is the what is the duration of the pump running is also specified so that capacity has to be taken uh, suppose let us say hydrant system we need 171 meter cube per hour we take uh, uh, an ordinary hazard so two hours water requirement for that and then sprinkler again what is the pumping capacity if see one hour or one and a half hours or two hours of pump running so that water capacity has to be taken separately and both have to be added and uh, it should be available in the water tank uh, this is again thank you sir uh, for mr santoshwari from krishna rao what is the right way of calculating the floor occupancy as per the code okay that's already answered that is already now. answered yeah oh sorry that's answered no yeah okay so i'll again uh, i'll move on to mr anil watke uh, his question is to mr santoshwari is it important to install sprinkler for building less than 15 meters with third floor getting prepared for emergency contact center in nagpur Yes, occupancy will be around fifty people and five thousand square feet area. Uh, the floor plate already he has mentioned it is more than five hundred square meters. So yeah. though the building is less than fifteen uh, meters, the sprinkler requirement would be there depending upon the travel distance and number of staircases available over there. So you have to see all the provisions uh, while giving. Uh, fire protection for the uh, less than 15 meters building you have to see the <coughs> approach of the, the availability of local fire services the roads availability parking availabilities for the circulation of the fire appliances and uh, considering that you have to see the type of occupancies if the bottom level is uh, say commercial shopping mall then first floor some office and second floor some office having floor plate more than 500 definitely such type of arrangement should have the sprinkler system for the better protection thank you 
Sir, next question to Mr. Pratashwari and uh, Abhay. The question from Ronald Saldana. Does the office building reception area, which is used as a trans, uh, transition space for employees and visitors to reach their respective floor and which has a double and single light space require compartmentation as per NBC? Should I answer? Yes, yeah. sir. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, it depends on what uh, your local laws say. If they have adopted NBC, you have to uh, adhere to the NBC requirements of compartmentation. And uh, uh, please note that whatever uh, is the law of the land, that has to be followed. Okay, so you may be having a very big uh, reception area, uh, but if the requirement says that in a business building, you need to have a certain size of compartment and that needs to be followed as per NBC, if NBC is applicable as per your local uh, laws. Would you like to add anything, Santosh sir? Uh, yes, means if the staircases, means how if the that hotel or business building having two staircases and both the staircases are internal one and they are passing through that atrium, I think in such case we should have this uh, separation or the two hour square rated corridor leading to the external, that is exit discharge. So that would be uh, more, uh, means safety point of view, it can be segregated from the other compartment, uh, that is atrium, you can say entrance lobby. All right. Uh, Abhay, you said the local law, uh, local law, that is, which is again the state law or a municipal uh, law. Yeah. Uh, if, they, if the law is uh, not as per the NBC, maybe compromising certain, you know, uh, a standard, uh, yeah. still um, can they get an NOC if they compromise on uh, yeah. NBC, but local law is uh, allowing them to do it. If the local authorities uh, agree or they are agreeable to uh, a different uh, requirement and if they are convinced that this is safe, then they can allow that. So it's the uh, prerogative of the local authority to overrule in case there is any discrepancy. Okay, next question to Mr. Fiare and again Abhay Purandre. The question is from uh, Spira. Yeah. How the sprinkler in refuge area beneficial if the refuge floor is open on two sides of the roof above? Sprinkler in refuge area? Is that the question? Yeah. How the sprinkler in refuge area beneficial if the refuge floor is open on two sides with roof op roof above? Who is running? The, is the question is not clear, sir? I don't think anybody provides. Uh, Sprinkler in refuge areas, okay? Sir, actually, as per the National Building Code, uh, an entire refuge area should be sprinkler. It is mentioned there. In section, section is mentioned there. But there are specific cases. Suppose that some, somewhere is, I have seen this, uh, this refuge areas are fully open to sky. Somewhere they have only roof, three sides open. Somewhere they have two sides open. Such cases are there. In such cases, of course, as he said, the sprinklers may not work. If both sides are open, it may not work. And time. So what, what is preferable is the, the entry to the refuge area, we should provide yeah. with the spot sprinklers so that yeah. anybody can go open. A, from yeah. That, that is not, not refuge area, Krishnan. Yeah. That area is not refuge. Refuge area is the area you come out to take refuge, not That's a right, space sir. within the building. I am saying. So let's make it, make it very clear. Refuge area is area where you go to take refuge, which from where you can have the evacuation taking place. You take refuge there from the fire. And so no fire will reach that particular area. You, what I'm you saying, ensure sir, that. What I'm saying. That is that what I'm saying. In such cases, when it's fully open on the other sides, yeah. the entry entry to the refuge area should have yeah. protection with sprinklers. The door correct, should have correct, sprinklers yeah. so that people can enter without spread of fire or smoke to that. That is right, the idea. Right. Very right. Okay, uh, this is again uh, the question for Santoshwari uh, from Gopina Tekur. Is it mandatory to provide exclusive solar powered lighting in common areas and staircases of a commercial multi story building? It is not mandatory to draw from solar only. You can utilize battery operated also or uh, backup from the any other source. It is not specified only from solar. 
but uh, for the green uh, things uh, there are requirements mm -hmm. about the development control authorities to have minimum 2% or 3% uh, renewable energy to be utilized for data center or it park so from that requirement uh, some local authority may insist for some uses uh, for uh, renewable energy but not specifically for this signages or something uh, you should draw energy only from solar but that embargo is not there yeah so uh, like the system has its own uh, inbuilt battery and uh, if it is standalone still they have its own battery but unless there is a separate battery bank available for lighting of the emergency lighting uh, next question from architect nilesh suryavanshi uh, this question for uh, santosh wari is there any information regarding how many fire towers to be provided as per floor area of building heights number of users this is a common question while designing i rise building and it building bigger floor plate design so as per the guidelines given in annex e for the high rise building in part 4 uh, it says for the residential building and the uh, educational building about 15 meters they should have minimum one and for other activities where uh, means uh, residential hotels are there then business buildings are there it parks are like that so in that case for every compartment there should be one fire tower so that is the requirement specified in the national building code part 4 annex e for high rise buildings thank you sir this question is for mr p r krishnan uh, from sarvana kumar why it is necessary to to go with vft or soft starter for the fire pump since the fire pump will be operation only in fire scenario and will be in continuous operation like utility service so first of all where it is mentioned that variable uh, frequency starter should be mentioned it soft starter means the are required for the fire pumps we are not said that anywhere even nbc cannot say that so ultimately i mean as i mentioned initially you have to go to the consent standards that we always recommend only dual starters as far as possible dual starters and depending upon the pump 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 pass power and the maximum demand requirements at the site we even soft star delta starters are allowed we are not restricted to put only this type of starters anywhere only these two starters are normally used again the uh, sir question to you from same sir sarvana kumar is asking as per nbc it is recommended to go with deluge wall for water curtain system however in few projects motorized butterfly walls are used whether it is acceptable as per the national building guidelines actually the way deluge walls uh, it mentioned because it's going to be deluge because all sprinklers are open in case of water curtain suppose there are 30 30 40 sprinklers all of them are going to operate and the demand is quite high flow demand is quite high so it's a sort of deluge so a deluge wall is always preferable always preferable and uh, motorized to butterfly walls you know butterfly walls uh, it opens gradually it is not doesn't allow water when and even the central flap opens there is going to be a couple effect water coming from that side coming this side there's going to be a problem so i think butterfly starter is not a good option you have to go only for the deluge wall when there is a total number of uh, entire flow is going to be discharged uh, to the pipelines deluge wall that is why we call it deluge system so the question to mr santosh wari from sethi is it applicable for old building uh, is retrofitting required for old building is it a statutory or mandatory in all states see any act or any rule uh, is already always prospective and it cannot be retrospective as the building has already approved in past already occupied Uh, then the new rules will not be applicable for that but in case of any change or any activity change or any internal changes are done in that case definitely the local authority or local fire services may insist for additional protection layer in the building which can be you cannot change the width of the staircases width of the passages in old buildings but you can have the additional uh, re protection requirement like detection system you can have you can have manual call points so these layers additional safety layers can be incorporated in old buildings 
so there is there are uh, means in international standards there is a provision for new and old building both but uh, nbc do not have such type of provisions for old buildings but uh, if local authority say they want to have additional requirements uh, then definitely that can be provided in the building that's it from my side thank you uh, sir again this is for the um abhay purandre and uh, even santosh mari can pitch in uh, the question from vinay kadilkar we understand that lift lobby must be separated from the floor with fire rated doors what happens when the lifts open directly in a central atrium similar to mini five star hotels are such cases non compliant with codes abhay you are on mute we must uh, differentiate between uh, these two areas one is the level of exit discharge so when we are talking of the ground floor that is the level of exit discharge and the floors above that are uh, floors uh, which can get affected by fire I, even the level of exit discharge can get affected but the reason why this requirement is provided is basically at a later stage of the fire when fire fighters go up and uh, if they use the fire lift they should be protected from the effects of a fire so that's the reason why this happens when uh, people are evacuating this arrangement has little uh, importance when you come to the ground floor you are actually exiting from the building so this is a different uh, requirement and that is why it's not uh, required to have this arrangement on the ground floor that is the level of exit discharge so we need to understand the difference between the level of exit discharge and the other levels as far as fire fighting response is concerned that's thank you point. thank you so the question to tra question from shweta sangma why booster pump installation is necessary can we avoid it mr tra i don't understand i don't understand the question if the uh, why, <laughs> why booster pump why the question is why booster pump installation is necessary can we avoid it that's what i'm saying how can we avoid it because the for every type of building and type of occupancy it calls for type of protection so hence it is required the pump is not required as per the code yes it's not required because for smaller and uh, smaller uh, occupancies and very very low rise buildings and all it may be possible because we can even take from over a tank i mean uh, by gravity pressure or a small pump at the terrace level we can use it otherwise it is not possible to avoid the booster pump okay the next question uh, to mr santoshwari from pradeep according to me it seems there is so many governing documents like codes etc are available and followed in our nation and other countries also my question is why under person implementation for sale is not seen in land land or buildings such type questions are arrived in mindset as per news like fire accident fire protection system do not work broken for recently constructed bridges collapses and many uh, reason that in the tv it comes so again i'll ask you the question why under person implementation for the same is not seen for buildings so already mr v suresh and trs sir has uh, mentioned about it so it should be a collective effort from all stakeholders all uh, services going inside the building so everybody has to uh, go as per the provisions of the nbc on and at different parts then only it is possible if you say overall requirements we have only means there is a gap of fire services in terms of number of train personnel number of fire stations and number of appliances is more than 90% in the country so you cannot have so many fire officers to visit each and every building and ensure that the fire safety is there secondly the safety culture is not there in india only in mncs and big uh, uh, companies only you will be in a uh, position to see they have the fire and safety officers employed for 24 by 7 to take care of the facilities so in case of residential building or, or, or even in small business buildings also or malls there are uh, hardly any teams available for the first responder so considering this scenario you have to ensure that the minimum 
protection what is provided as per the nbc should maintain in the good working condition so actual in case of emergency it will come in operation so that is the bottom requirement and it is everybody's or user or occupier who so ever it may be it's his responsibility to ensure that whatever the system provided in the building they are in the good working condition so that they can be utilized in case of real emergency that's it thank you and i think uh, two more dimension that should be added is also not just the building in normal condition buildings in calamitous situation is also important way many natural disasters can come over there it can be a very heavy cyclonic weather very heavy rainfall very heavy uh, earthquake or a flooding or a landslide you know these type of natural calamities are also issues where in addition to the normal forces buildings uh, on buildings these particular thing come and how fire safety and rescue are there together they are both uh, connected together uh, will affect i told it as a sway coming i talked also in respect of the uh, what should happen in those particular things to take care of the sway of the building for wind sway as well as earthquake sway etc etc you got to also deal with that and then the building code has got to be part 4 has to be read along with part 6 structural design any case for glazing structural glazing issue and part 8 on building services and part 9 on plumbing services so not part 4 alone because you might have a problem on the fire due to the air conditioning installation due to the lift installation due to the electrical installation due to the uh, uh, plumbing installation coming over there so therefore you will have to be in an integrated approach has got to be done to take care of that fire will come as a result of any one of those particular component the source of that not only the normal activity related one and therefore the coordination integration between all the critical services also become important fire service uh, fighting service also an equally important component so you got to keep that also in view and structural design i did make a mention i just thought how can structure and fire come together but i'm very happy to know that the nbc 2016 has got a clear provision that for buildings uh, especially tall buildings and other buildings over there where the fire load is higher the column the beam the slab and the floor each one should have additional cover of reinforcement which the structural engineer may not have covered but to take care of the additional uh, fire resistance rating required the building code both in part 6 and uh, structural design uh, concrete code and the part 4 they have provide the requirement on that therefore suddenly you will find it is not just the requirement of the from fire load alone but the fire resistance rating will improve for the uh, for the column the beam the slab as well as the floor okay thank you thank you so much sir for adding more clarity to that questions the question number 22 from sauri rajan uh, from jain university the question to mr p r krishnan and uh, abhay there has been long gap in the release of national building code after mbc uh, 2005 and there has been lot of changes encountered in the modern buildings and the life style how does the latest nbc accounts for with regard to part 4 are the manufacturing and testing agencies equipped fully to meet the code requirements so what's the question the question the is question? There, there is a there is a gap between 2005 and 2016 and oh, i i clarify i'll clarify that nbc as uh, mr uh, saab uh, has indicated over there uh, uh, is a is a dynamic document continuously kept uh, alive through the comments which is received the panels which are dealing with the nbc are all live panel they are not dead they are not dead panels panels means those members committee members continuously receive those comments i think at the beginning of the meeting we indicated that we uh, what do you call uh, keep a track on the feedback on the building code on a day to day basis through the comments coming and these comments when it comes to a reasonably critical mass or some emergency requirement are there the panel meets immediately to see the comments over there so after considering those particular comments over there 
the panel will, uh, uh, the technical panel will decide on whether to uh, make some changes, some amendments to be made, some modification to be made, or some new edition initial uh, made. And that's always done like that. I think in the beginning of the meeting, I already told that how this particular part has generated a lot of comments on that. And you will find very shortly that some of them will come through clarification, uh, increased understanding of the provisions, most of them and also additions coming through amendment. You don't require a revision of the whole building code just to make changes in part four alone. So that can happen. It has already happened earlier. When the 83 version came and before the 2005 came, we brought out amendments to that. Similarly, also in the 2005 version, we brought out certain amendments to the 2005 version. It doesn't have to wait till 2016. So you got to keep track of that. So if there's any concern for you on emergency level that any provision on the NBC part four is having any problem or any restrict you want, please bring it out. This is a time because the panel is continuously meeting. And I told you about 200 page comments are there, which are already seen by the uh, panel. We can do that. So there's no, there's no worry at all. Uh, uh, NBC always responds immediately. Thank you. Sir, sorry, Rajan, the question was very clear. When there's a gap, are the manufacturer and testing agencies equipped fully to meet the code requirement? As you know, Jain University has its own uh, testing lab. So he's asking whether uh, testing agencies are fully equipped to meet the code changes and requirements. Answer is yes. Yeah. The next question, let's move on to uh, the question to Mr. Santoshwari from Rabindra Adhigaika. His question is, are all NBC codes are mandatory in India? It's a very simple uh, answer. I'm sure. Are, are all? Are all the NBC codes are mandatory in India? Oh, I think it's already clarified. Very yeah, clarified. Yeah. I think <laughs> any provisions of the building code and the standards are recommendatory guiding document, excepting certain standards, which Indian standards institution based on government decision would make it mandatory. NBC is not. But the moment the provisions of the NBC is considered as an important one and the regulatory authorities, which can be a local body, urban development department, or the fire department, thinks all the provisions should be there. They make it mandatory. All the provisions of the National Building Code, that particular will become mandatory. So therefore, the answer is, therefore, depends upon the regulatory authorities on to make uh, uh, them uh, uh, mandatory or not mandatory. And structural design is also another particular part, part six, where nobody can think of doing an earthquake resistant design or cyclone in a different way than what is put in the code there. Therefore, all those provisions by and large, according to me, except in part three, where the local requirements of heights or uh, spaces and requirements of road width, etc., might marginally change, which can again have local variations coming on that. To me, all other parts of the building code are more or less become mandatory in terms of provisions on that. So that will be the right answer for them to take it forward. Okay, the, let's move on to the question number uh, 24 from uh, uh, Pawan Kumar to question to Mr. Abhay and uh, Santosh Warik. For pro post project scenario, how can the limitation related to additional features can be added upon or considered as a mobility and space constraint being the major challenges. Abhay? Mr. Santosh, are you there? Should I repeat the question again? Yeah, repeat the question. Uh, the question from Pawan Kumar. For post project scenario, how can the limitation rela limitations related to additional features can be added upon or considered as a mobility and space constraint before the major uh, being the major challenge? Means he is talking about means it is question is not clear. He is yeah. talking about external uh, means uh, approach road for the moment of uh, fire and emergency services or. Circulation after the building is occupied, then in additional some features are uh, embedded in the drawing itself, so that common passage is provided in front of lift lobby. They are converted into reception area and sit out areas. So such type of uh, cases are happening in day to day uh, life. So wrong, wrong way of doing. Wrong, wrong yes. way of doing. 
Yes. That is, a, you are posing more fire load on a particular area. Also, due to the challenges of car parking, the minimum six meter road, which is specified all around the high rise building for mobility of fire and emergency appliances, that is also blocked uh, by car parks. So that is again a challenge issue for fire services. Sir, you can stay on. Uh, there's a question to you again uh, from British Doshi. How to apply norms of MBC codes and Indian standards for a large scale industries? Which one to follow? So industry, uh, whatever given in National Building Code, uh, Table 7, it is a minimum requirement for small scale industries. There are independent uh, IS standards for various types of industries. They are specified at the end of the part uh, four of National Building Code. And in case of other petrochemical or major industries, pharma industries, or uh, even uh, fertilizer industries, there are separate standards uh, by, under Petroleum Act. There are uh, different uh, uh, means uh, factory acts are there. So uh, various guidelines are provided for different type of industries. Uh, so that will be made applicable. So whatever given as Mr. T.R.A. Krishna already told, the requirements specified for industries, they are the minimum ones. So depending upon the potential risk, what you are storing, where you are storing, what is the process, what is the temperature uh, in the process, what is your finished good, what are the physical and chemical properties of the finished good, based upon that, your requirement for fire and life safety will be different for different industries. So one has to take a call depending upon the total uh, raw material available in the industry, the process hazards and the storage hazards. So all yeah, utility think, uh, hazards. Dominic, with your permission, I find one comment keeping on coming for Lalit Deshmukh, the same topic which is just now opened out by Santosh Warik. And he's talking of a building on a three-storied building or which is uh, uh, which is going to be pharma, pharma bulk drugs. Because of story height being 4.5 meter, he is going up to 17.5 meter. Because we said more than 15 meters, you got to have all the requirement. My own direct answer is, of course, you have to do it. Whether just because it's only three story, number of story is not the issue. The actual issue is the height of the particular building over there. Uh, Varik sir, would you like to clarify on that? So there are some uh, activities where the building is totally open from all sides. So there is no cladding or enclosures uh, for such type of building. So in that case, we don't insist for the sprinkler protection uh, in uh, these buildings. And there is hardly any human uh, life occupied in such kind of a bird drug plant. So to, we have to consider the total uh, quantity process in that plant, the number of occupant on the floor, and the, how the building is, whether it is, it is, if it is covered, then definitely sprinklers will attract. Yeah, I think this covered. building is, it's a, it's yeah, a it is not covered. Manufacturing floor, that coverage yes, is coming yes. regularly. Okay. So, uh, Mr. So Deshmukh, Lalit Deshmukh, you got an answer. Next one. Sir, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not, uh, you know, looking at the chat box. Or no, a no, no, I'm, uh, I thought, I thought it's a related on industry. There's a specific query on industry. Okay. Hey, what, uh, I, I would like to add, I would like to add some important information here. Uh, Mr. Dominic, yeah. if you don't, if you don't mind, um, see that the question is very relevant uh, regarding large scale, large industries. Uh, NBC, as of now, it is uh, not catering to large scale industries. That I would confidently say that. But we are in the process of revising Table Seven as well as the Chapter Five of the National Building Code, and we are also very act uh, actually revising IS One Three Three Two Three Nine Hydrant System, and IS One Five One Zero Five is already revised and approved. Also, now we, here we have separated all moderate and high hazard industries separately, and they will comply only with these uh, respective standards, not Table Seven. That, of course, that's a future plan, not exactly the plan on date. It's a future plan. So, so again, you can stay back uh, onto the question of again uh, from British. Uh, British Doshi is asking you, here, Mr. Pierre Krishnan, what should be the minimum tank size, that is diameter, item capacity be considered for water spray system? Okay. That depends now. What, what, see, water spray system again, water spray system is a type of a deluge system. So the entire water is going to go out of the, the pump, it will be always running in more than 100% flow also. So, if it's a transformer protection, it's a protection is only for about uh, 30 to 40 minutes. If it is going to be a tank protection, it's going to be a 90 minutes uh, protection requirement. So there are some other cases, there were two hours running also. So it all depends upon the individual application. 
if it is transformed with the tank capacity may not be large if it is a uh, uh, this one tank capacity we are determined based on the risk as well as the uh, duration for which water is required and it is available in is 15325 okay thank you sir uh, this question for mr santosh warik uh, if you could understand by venkata krishnan uh, this question does not has not much clarity but i uh, i try to uh, you know put this question to you sir uh, in the code they mention only co2 oblique inert gas for fire suppression system not mentioned about clean agent like fe36 novac 1230 and why see code this is the code and not the uh, standard as such so code cannot uh, include the proprietary names of various uh, total flooding system fn200 novac or something these are the proprietary name of the companies with patent so we cannot include these all uh, specific name in the code so we have a separate standard indian standard for this and we have to go as per that or if any body is going as per the international fm or ul uh, approved uh, product we accept that as per the good international practices so we are not barring uh, barring that but uh, in code we, it should be generic it should not be sp uh, specifying monopolistic uh, uh, <laughs> next, uh, names in the code so well answered uh, uh, to that question mr balakrishnan from lnt uh, is asking this question interpretation of basement ventilation requirement is not clear and each cfo is interpreted in different way how to bring clarity across all state is from lnt i'm sure mr bakrishan who i know from chennai is handling many projects across the country so he's saying state to state is differ from each cfo it differ on basement ventilation yeah, all, all, all yeah, should yeah. adopt all should adopt the nbc provision there are clarity of one because what must be happening is some of those states like ap and telangana they make changes they make changes in the nbc provision on various aspects to make it slightly more or less and not exactly that and that's what exactly must be mr balakrishnan's concern on that each one of them in their own way try to in the states for local requirements or pressure or whatever they make their own particular thing that means building code is a guiding document each state can adopt or adapt with such local variations as may be necessary to deal with but then there should have clear reason why i am changing that particular one you know there should be requirement in respect of that that's only way but if there are specific areas on which he wants clarity in interpretation on the basement ventilation we can definitely uh, uh, address that and bring clarity if there is no clarity in the present way the clause is drafted that's a that's a thing that i want to say uh, santosh you want to add something yeah means uh... clear guidelines are already given as far as ventilation is concerned uh, means it, nbc says minimum 0.9 to 1.2 meter uh, it should be raised so that the light and ventilation can be addressed for the first basement and in case of uh, second third or fourth basement the mechanical ventilation uh, shall be provided through ducting systems all should be minimum to over spire rated uh, to achieve in case of any emergency whatever uh, products are combustions are there that is hot gases or uh, smoke can be taken out and the proper intake also required and both intake and of, uh, exhaust system should be minimum should have minimum fire rating so that is not clarity is not clarity or gas yeah. okay no. thanks sir uh, i'll move no. on to the uh, next question that is from mayendra v from embassy india bangalore this this question is for abai yeah. regarding fire stops for shaft is the ul certified system for of fire stop is the only system compliant to nbc 2016 that is is 12458 2019 code of requirement so there this is a reference this has a reference sorry i am oh sorry i just missed it uh, Okay, can you move on to that question, sir? Because my my page is somewhere it missing. I was reading that question, so embassy one, no? Okay. Yeah, embassy is there. My interview. This has host stream oh, testing yeah. reference of fire stop code. Yeah. ISBS four seven six compliant, not sufficient for fire stop. 
Yeah, I think uh, what uh, the issue here is that uh, uh, one set of uh, tests require a host stream application after the after it is exposed to fire, while another does not. So the code that we have that requires a host stream application after the duration of the test, which is also there in UL, uh, but it's not there in the British code. So the problem will be that if you take uh, a product which is approved as per the British code, it will not have that requirement related to the host stream test. So that is the uh, issue he has. But yes, if you go as per uh, what is given in NBC and which refers to that IS code, and it has a host stream test, then you will need to have a product which has passed a test which had a host stream involved in that. Thank you. The next question to Mr. Again, uh, it goes to Abhay and uh, Mr. Thierry Krishna. Very simple questions. Whether MS conduit is mandatory for fire alarm system for armored cable? Even I have this own doubts. When you have an armored cable, do you need a MS conduit? Wait. The question to Mr. Thierry Krishna and Abhay, whether MS conduit is mandatory for fire alarm system for armored cable? Not, sir. No. It's not mandatory. It's not mandatory. So, Kalidasan, it's not mandatory as per building codes. So, Pratip Dhani from uh, Vijay System, the Pratip Dhani is asking uh, this question to Abhay. The fire door in NBC class 2.2, note 2, for exit shall have a stability, integrity, and 20 minute insulation. Please clarify whether all the other doors in the building shall also have stability, integrity, and 20 minutes insulation, or only stability or integrity criteria is enough. So uh, I think the clause uh, is specific related to exit doors. Yes. So you are talking of doors which are. Uh, placed in exits and which will typically have a 120 minute fire rating. For that, you will need a 20 minute uh, insulation. It needs to meet a 20 minute insulation criteria. If you are providing a door which is not part of an exit, then obviously this does not apply. I okay. think that uh, can you repeat that answer, uh, Abhay? Sorry, I even I didn't uh, catch uh, I think it's clear, very clear. He's given the answer. Yeah. What do, you, do you want me to repeat that? Yeah, yeah. Can you just repeat that? Uh, this clause refers to doors and exits. Yeah. So when I'm talking of doors and exits, I'm referring to doors which will lead to the exit stair, which will uh, typically be a 120 minute fire rating. And for that, uh, they have specified that uh, while the stability and uh, okay. the other criteria needs to be 120 minutes, but for insulation, it can be only 20 minutes. Okay, for insulation is 20 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, the next question to Mr. Thierry Krishna, sir, uh, from Talat Mulani. Sprinkler system requirement for high-rise bu buildings and high-rise residential building as per new NBC. Yeah, we have made now a separate uh, annexure in the uh, uh, approved IS15105, which is pending publication. We have made a separate annexure for sprinkler uh, installation requirements for high-rise buildings. Sir, uh, uh, this question to Santosh Wari from uh, CN in Narasim. Like to understand as for new NBC, we need to maintain certain changes like having a separate power for lift. But how to go with old building which is not having this provision as a separate line for lift? So for old buildings, uh, you cannot apply uh, the new rules, as I already told. And in well, that, that, there's a caveat there. The caveat there. The caveat is that normally, in the case of uh, old uh, old building, we can't. It's only for new building that uh, can be applied there. But if uh, based on assessment of the authority, they know that the present occupancy cannot be continued with the deficiency level of a very high order. They can request the builder and the occupant to make such changes as may be needed to take care of the safety related issue. And to that takes some retrofitting and changes can happen. It can even go to some extreme situation where if it is, if it is of a very you know, dangerous situation, they can also declare the building unsafe. So while 
the provisions of the NBC cannot be applied for an existing building to the extent of it being affecting on the safety factors if it is very predominant, and then they can ask for the changes on marginal repairs, renewal, retrofitting, or staircase is one area where in many cases, staircase are provided outside the particular building to take care of the fire escapes and all, which was not originally provided. They were all done 50 years back or so many years back, but users have been continuing to do that, but it's a matter of safety issues on that. But uh, Variksav is absolutely right. The present provision does not apply to the existing building, it's only for ordinary. But under the unsafe building clause, you can, and which will be known through the visits, uh, structural uh, 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 deficiency or uh, obsolescence or decay or the systems not in a good condition of working, etc., etc. They will become all part of the inspections which the fire authorities will do. They can always intervene uh, at that point of time and suggest to the owner and the builders that what needs to be done to have at least the minimum safety aspects to be ensured on that. That 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 aspect also, also we should know when we know that the present code does not apply to existing buildings. So therefore, with that caveat, you can proceed. Uh, the question to Mr. Uh, Thierikshan, sir, from Joe Thomas, uh, we uh, still we still see few companies promoting use of AL conductors for fire survival cables. How will such product bar from the market by regulator as a matter of life and death? This question to Mr. Tierra Christian, sir, is regarding cable is asking there is some confusion regarding capacity of fire. Uh, sorry, uh, this is from uh, Joe Thomas. We still see a few companies promoting use of AL conductors for aluminium fire survey cables. Aluminium conductors. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, actually, it is not uh, according to me, it is uh, uh, it should be discouraged. And uh, if necessary, we have to address this in the concerned uh, uh, Indian standard uh, for electric installation we, and uh, we'll, all other fire other codes also. We will try to do something about it. Okay, sir. So the question from uh, Manish Jain uh, to Mr. Thayer Krishnan, sir. In mixed occupancy of high-rise residential building above 45 meters, basement are ordinary and residential area light as on. In basement, that is GA and MS pipe, uh, and can be PVC, CPVC pipe of residential flow. Is it in such project is it allowed? See, if uh, that such occupancies are fully segregated, fully fire separated with uh, four hours rating and whatever it is mentioned in the code, then I don't find any objection provided uh, the CPVC pipes uh, are can be used in those areas and wherever they where, where they are used and they are uh, restricted for use and they, those areas are mentioned in is15105 now in the new publication thank you sir the question from umesh umeshwar rao to mr tr krishnan there is some confusion regarding capacity of fire pump maximum of Sorry, I'll read out again. There is some confusion regarding the capacity of fire from maximum hydrant post, water storage tank for the hydrant system. Some consultants say that we can have up to 100 hydrant post for 171 cubic meter pump. Also, fire tank capacity need not be increased if we increase the pump capacity from 171 meter, uh, meter cubic per hour or to 273 cubic meter per hour. Please guide us. How is it possible, sir? If we want 171 meter cube per hour for two hours uh, pump running for putting out the fire. That means the water capacity is already 342 uh, meter cube. Suppose you increase it to 270, that means the actual the number two hours, it comes down to about, about an hour or so. So how is it possible? Uh, somebody is misguiding. That's all I can say. OK. Uh, the Sunil Kumar question to Mr. Abey. Is there provision for passive fire protection for combust uh, combustible services which are passing through fire rated walls and floors in NBC as a combustible services like PVC pipes and insulated ducts and pipes require instruments and uh, material? 
Yeah, I think uh, NBC is very clear that uh, when you have compartmentation and when you have penetrations in the barriers, then those have to be suitably addressed using fast stop materials, uh, depending on the application. So I think there is no, it's quite clear, there is no confusion in that. We need to have uh, fast stop materials uh, to maintain the integrity of the barrier. Hey, thank you, Abed. Sir, uh, Mr. Santosh Warik, uh, the uh, column number 39, the question from uh, uh, Somnath Bhera. So can you take from this question for five questions, sir? I'll just take a break. The, uh, the column number 61, the question number 39 from Soman Bera. Uh, I think, can you just uh, take up this question, sir, for up to five questions? I want to take a break. Yes. Why NBC not following all over India? Every state has got its own bylaws as far as fire officers. So as far as fire officers are concerned, they have to follow both the local development control rules or develop uh, DCRs or the building bylaws. Uh, in some states they call. So that is the minimum requirement as far as that city is concerned or that state is concerned or at that province is concerned. And for fire and life safety, they have to depend upon the part four of national building code. So they, uh, as far as the building structures are concerned, they have to go as per the local development control rules and as and the requirement of fire prevention and protection is concerned, they have to depend upon the part four of national building code. So it is a mix of uh, building bylaws or development control rules and the NBC part four. So some guidelines which are related to uh, marginal open spaces around the building for the mobility of fire and emergency appliances, then the width of the staircases and corridors, then the location of refuge areas. Some uh, changes are there in the local rules as compared to national building code. So they have to go as per the uh, local bylaws and uh, for fire and safety, the uh, additional layers mm -hmm. of uh, National Building Code uh, Part 4 provisions are incorporated by the fire officer. So there is a change across India with respect to state to state uh, in various type of uh, occupancies. So the next question is... Mr. Shahababu Dengi, it is uh, during the construction phase of any commercial building. That question is not uh, clear, but the, for the construction uh, activities, some guidelines are there in the part four, wherein you should have the water storage and the dry piping uh, along with the uh, your construction so that in case of anything goes wrong, you can utilize that uh, water storage of 2000 liters on every floor uh, for uh, firefighting anything goes wrong then you can have the fire extinguishers also uh, as per the code uh, there is another question by dr k kamlan uh, signifies the revision of national building code under covid 19 condition so covid 19 is a temporary phase maybe uh, till the vaccine is coming up in the month of January or February. So after that, normal practice will uh, be there. So I don't think that will make more effect on the codal provision. Uh, the next question is from Mr. Hetal Desai. How pressurization system works in the atrium area? If it anything given in NBC. So I think PRS, sir, uh, there is a separate uh, annexure. Yeah, we, have about an we have an annexure yes. uh, for atriums. What should be provided, so, what should not be provided, it is there. Is, uh, I would like to add here, it's, uh, for an atrium, you cannot have a pressurization system. So there it's an exhaust system. Yeah. And pressurization system is what you will use for an enclosed space, such as a staircase. Correct. Mm. And I, there is a clear guideline given there. Uh, you could, uh, and uh, interestingly, uh, the NPC gives the option of a performance based design also in this case. So, one, you can uh, select a certain uh, number of air changes per hour, or you can do an engineering analysis and give a performance based design also. That option is also there in NPC. Another is uh, uh, open. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, sir. 
No, I was wondering that question on COVID is a good, uh, good relevant question on that. I think large number of things have undergone changes uh, as a result of the Indian Medical Council came with the first one. They indicate the all air conditioned building, you cannot use it because it uh, ensures the infection being spread. Nothing on the fire, fire issue, but immediately Ishre uh, had got into the picture to see what therefore needs to be done in central air conditioning systems of buildings to ensure that the infection control is brought in through the right level of uh, temperature control, the filters, and other related uh, issue. And uh, at the end of the day, more importantly, is the enough size of rooms and high to natural ventilation and cross ventilation is an important aspect to be done. And also the space for walking around the building. So what is required is, as far as the fire protection clause is concerned in part four, we may not require any post COVID uh, changes happening, but I do find on the chapter on air conditioning and other related buildings, some amount of change will happen. For example, uh, it is not again affecting part four in here, lifts and escalators, because to avoid the human touch into the particular building over there, the button, the floor button, if you are able to have all of them using, which are sensitive one, the doors to be opening on their own based on the uh, type of uh, various uh, uh, sensory uh, uh, details, and that can happen. Lift floor, various floors can happen. Some of the changes are now being incorporated in those, but not directly in the part four and fire protection. Other, other sections, yes, the changes are being incorporated for dealing with the conditions of the post-COVID uh, situation. Possibly, you may have occupant load will be an either area where, like uh, uh, Sandosh ji had indicated that previously the occupant load for a building is 10, but you don't want them to pack the same, the two meter type of distances to be required. You might find that the number of occupants originally pre-COVID, it would be so many numbers, post-COVID, and even for some more time for to ensure spread is not there, they'll automatically bring down while the population can take a larger number of people based on the original occupant load. But now when things are opening out over there, only 50% of the people are putting, because then you're able to have the additional amount of the distance to become, which was not there earlier. They were close, too close earlier. Now, all these things are issues which will be, which are being working on. Most of the cases, uh, they are not opened up. People are working from home, most of the cases. And therefore, uh, and even industries where they open, I'm sure uh, Sandosh can clarify, uh, only 30 or 40% of the people are working on most of the industrial uh, manufacturing flows and not the full capacity what will be there. Isn't it uh, in uh, MIDC area? Yes, MIDC areas, uh, IT offices and all that, they are working with uh, only 15% to 20% strength right now. Ah, correct. That shares the social distancing also. Okay. Ah. Yes. Sir, uh, Dominic, back here. Sir, I've just picked up one uh, question from Mr. Namashivai, who has been regular to as a speaker in our meeting. Um, he's giving the suggestion also uh, checking up with NBC panelists here. Uh, his question is very clear. Uh, this again for Mr. Pierre Krishnan, sir. This is from Namashwaya. The side setback requirement in MB, of NBC is not followed in most of the state. In each state, they have their own parameter as per their local regulation. The height of uh, the height of deciding the height of deciding a building as high-rise building is also differ from state to state in India. In global level, there are many HRB without setbacks. So when the inbuilt system is self-dependent, uh, the self-dependent fire safety system, what is the point in increasing the side setback requirement? Uh, depends on the increase of building heights as per the NBC 2016. So he's saying, as in 2016, as the building height goes, the side setback also goes. When the system is well, um, you know, uh, commissioned. So what is the requirement? Hope you understood this question, Mr. Pierre. Yeah, it's yeah. a long-winding question, but very simple. Don't put setbacks. Put all uh, all the fire protection inbuilt. Put sprinklers all over. Don't ask for any setbacks. That don't depend upon the fire brigade people to come around to fight the fire. That means effectively what like a row housing he wants to have. Only front setback and the rear setback. Don't insist on side setback at all. That's the, that is the short point of that. That yes. development is also permitted in the building code. If you see in part three, 
already you have three types of development for fully detached building semi detached building and row housing row housing is only front and rear and interior open spaces and whereas in the case row housing is not there it all depends the scale at which you are talking about if it is a very small building residential building of two storied or three stories all fine or but now our markets at sikra maximum about three floors you can do that because then the local fire brigade with the type of fire fighting capacity they can always come and fight the fire but if it is going to be a tall building and if you have to really reach at point of view then the open space around the building has got to be provided if your local body is put only two feet side open space obviously don't don't permit the tall building simple why well, there's no problem on that nobody has asked you to approve that on that I, at least we would we should not as a fire authority you should not ever dare to approve with only 3 feet side open spaces which is okay for uh, in the building roads for just a two storied building like uh, most of the residential buildings in bangalore other 3 uh, feet or 4 feet side open space is good enough up to a two storied building you know ground plus one building lighting and ventilation is only issue but if you are talking of a, a building which is going to be four storied five storied eight storied nine storied you would reach that height over there how will you reach the height over there especially if the depth of the building is also there it also depend how much the depth of the building is coming on that to reach it cannot be only from the front only yeah sir okay question sir Questions or comment? Sir, this is uh, this question is is it should be asked to part three, not part four, according to me. <laughs> yeah, sir. That's why I answered three, it. Part three. <laughs> part three. Yeah. Because I, I, chairman, chairman, chairman of part three, I answered it. <laughs> uh, that's why he has answered it. Suresh has answered already. Yeah. Uh, again, Mr. Ramachandra, I am very important question is asking in NBC part four, twenty sixteen prescribes active and passive fire safety measures based on the. based on the consideration of building floor size and building height but the fire behavior and impact of of the fire depends on the type of fuel building content process that happens in the building structure please explain then how the parameters of fire safety requirements such as active fire uh, active systems and fire resistant rating especially water requirements are derived in mbc Is a clear question, sir. A very very long question, sir. I would like to uh, hear once again. Uh, I just read out uh, NBC Part Four, twenty sixteen prescribes active and passive fire system measure based on the consideration of the building floor, building height, but the fire behavior and the impact of the fire depends on the type of fuel or building content process that happens in the building structure. Yeah. Please explain then how the parameters of fire safety requirement in such active system and fire resistant rating, especially water requirements, are derived on in NBC. Sir, it all. That's why we have done hazard classification, no, sir. We have done extensive hazard classification, and we have given the uh, as per the hazard classification, we have seen the uh, fire load also. We have calculated, and we have given the formulas also the National Building Code. That is how we divided light to moderate high, high, high hazard A, B, and storage hazards. So how can uh, what better we can do? Otherwise, we have to go for performance based design. If it's not code based, somebody has to give performance based design. What? Uh, I, I just exactly what what is this? What is in his mind? I cannot read. So uh, what I would only say that uh, hazard classification is done well because we have done in TSC for the last forty five years. The same thing is being followed even today, and we analyze the hazards, and that's why we test gone into codes. Sir, um, we have almost ninety questions on the question answer panel. I think uh, which you all can see, and uh, there are another uh, remaining. And I think we have some seventy to eighty questions. What we can do is uh, how many, we'll how, many how many more uh, questions? How many more? We are still uh, around nine hundred fifty plus ninety, and a two fifty question. So which means uh, people are quite uh, inquisitive. People want to have clarity. Oh, yeah. And nice. so what we can do, sir, is my suggestion. Uh, what i will do is i'll put all the questions um, relevant questions in the excel sheet and uh, probably i'll uh, give it to mr santosh warik and we can divide this question and we can answer it then i'll put this and pro provide to all the participants who are here i have the record of all the participants i Good. don't want to see that you know some question we have answered some question not answered but if i want to continue this question i think we'll end up till 6 o'clock in the evening which is not Though I would wish to, because I have the our I can go twenty four into seven on the Zoom. No, I think uh, we have I'm already sure. 
we are all you know, I here. went to take a break. I just want to go to Zoom, but I'm sure the panelists, you are sitting there and you need to take a break. And it's not possible to take all questions. But however, we try to attempt this whole Q&A. It could be more refined. Uh, say we can go to take these questions and probably publish much earlier. These are the questions that we're going to answer. And you know, so speak to that, those questions and answer maybe 20 to 30. But yes, sir. So Krishna, sir. Dominic, Dominic, I want to say something. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, what I've, I have gone to almost all the questions. Uh, what are the balance questions also I have seen? Uh -huh. uh, I, I find that there is a... See, there are, as I told you, uh, National Building Code is associated with almost 45 to 46 standards, uh, directly and directly. And unfortunately, uh, it so happened that those 47 standards, uh, most of them are not revised. Uh, and when National Building Code has come to the latest, they are still lagging behind. Of course, now, one by one, they are clearing it one by one now. If at least there are four or five important standards there which are under consideration, if they are, they are in the final stages, if they are cleared, then all those doubts will automatically go off. All these questions okay. will automatically vanish. I agree. I agree. Very good. Now, Vice Chairman and can be said agreed, and I'm sure that we can expect a quick uh, resolution to this. And uh, as you said, if those are released, most of the question also is answered. But however, sir, from our end, as an expert, from being in this field, uh, it's our duty to answer to all these questions. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will try and uh, forward you all the answers to those questions that you asked for. And um, it's we cannot. There is a uh, Dominic, with your permission. There's one question which has come very, very valid question. Uh, it might appear to be very simple. The residential building, no major activity or hazardous occupancy. Arun has asked the right question from BIS itself. Each one having two cylinders in their own residence, the kitchen over there. No fire protection facility at all provided at all, especially if it is going to be less than 15 meters and all the particular one. So don't you think we require some protection required, if not small ceasefire type of uh, a thing for fire extinguisher or something like that? It's a general question. Residential building, minimum two cylinders in each of the house. It can be a very, very major hazard there. How do we take care of the ensuring your young children, babies, old people inside the particular house there? Shouldn't we have something put over there and not only always in tall buildings and other related ones? You should provide or not provide. You can give, because all the three are there. You can give a short reply. Then later on, we'll see how the NBC cover that. Christian sir, sir, actually, uh, this uh, question uh, that during even when when I was working in tariff advisory committee, uh, this question was also coming to us quite frequently from others. And as fortunately, we were having enough of experience. We are getting experience, fire loss experience from all the insurers. And we ourselves do fire loss audits. And then we know how much is lost. So from that, we have found that uh, uh, the accidents, what you have specified just now, they are, they are there. But they are very few. So we thought that we will leave it to the BIS. We will not insist. We leave it to BIS? What do you mean? We need to be, I mean, Bureau of Indian Standards, let them mention, because we didn't want to mention it, because we didn't have... No, that will come in the code. What will BA is? BA is an institution. Code is a yeah, document. Yeah. So do you yeah. want to have something to be brought to the court to deal with two cylinders in the residential building, some provision? You know, can we indicate that at least they should have a small extinguisher there with a shorter version, which is also now moving in the market? Minimum that something should be provided. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that you know a wet riser or dry riser and all the sprinkler. Shouldn't we have something provided is on that? Sir, uh, my question to you, uh, my answer to Mr. Uh, Suresh, sir, you know. Uh, Arun so Kumar. Of, no, Arun Kumar. Arun Kumar Square. Okay. Yeah, Arun Kumar Square, sir. Uh, India is the only country in the world which does not insist having a minimum the gas leak detector or an extinguisher or even the fire blanket in the kitchen. So 58% of the fire happens from the home. In Indian, uh, the statistic says the 58% uh, fire that is reported are from homes. So we do not insist, uh, even in Sri Lanka, the country like uh, Bangladesh, they insist for fire blanket in the kitchen, which is mandated by the municipal corporation. So in India, India is the only country where in the residential area, we do not insist for gas leak detector and the fire extinguisher. And if I, these three need to be made, made mandatory, at so least. Yes, sir. So we can revisit. We can revisit the clause, Dominic. That's what he's saying. 
that we need yeah. re revisit the class where no provision is there to make some provision to take care of the safety of uh, not only the kitchen plus the remaining one. And not only that, now the second question that comes over there, a related question is, now that gas supply has gone, piped gas supply, like, like, like your piped water supply, electric connection, etc. And that's also coming over there. Anything that can come over there at one point of time, well, there are flats with so many, particularly on each floor and on the vertical height. So possibly gas installation, pipe gas supply, the nature of fire related, um, what needs to be done of precautionary and other related one, and what should be the minimum type of safeguards required on that, we can possibly provide. At present, it's silent. At present, no provision is there. So we'll have to consider that. That's, that's all the point that I'm trying to make. Sir, concluding remarks from uh, all of you, sir. Uh, I'll start with uh, Abhay. You have any, how, how do you uh, think that? Uh, other... sir, like to, uh, in fact, to add to this uh, as part of my conclusion, that internationally, you know, the maximum number of fires occur in the residential occupancy. Yes, sir. And interestingly, though our experience has been different as DRS has said, but internationally, uh, more fires have occurred in low-rise buildings, more fatalities have occurred in low-rise buildings than in high-rise buildings. That's the trend. Okay, and yes, we need to address it. And also the fact that uh, probably we need to have more training sessions, more... Uh, you know, courses related to NBC part four in uh, higher education for architects or those kind of professionals. So they get, yeah. uh, you know, exposure. Because currently, they are not at all uh, exposed to these issues. So that's what I would say. Thank you. Sir, Santosh Varik, sir. I would say uh, means uh, being a fire act or the development control rules the minimum guidelines are prescribed. So holistically, we have to see the various provisions. Lifts are important for day-to-day -day use. Then services required, gas pipelines, electrical lines, fiber optic lines, so air conditioning, ventilation for hotels, hospitals. So holistically, every discipline should implement their standards in the building to make building more safer for Use it. Thank you. So, uh, Krishan, sir. Yeah, it, uh, actually, uh, the questions which have come out, they are really very, some of the questions are uh, very great questions, of course, which we are not touching so far. Anyhow, we are going to answer it. Uh, in fact, I had, I already wrote my answers. Since it was more to me, I already given the answer. I can forward it to you. But I would uh, personally feel that. Uh, uh, we should have one more session like this to go much more deeper into this. Yes, sir. Maybe better moderator, not like me, uh, probably, and uh, shorten these whole uh, questions. And uh, it needs a lot of work. I think uh, uh, this is my third, uh, third or fourth session on this national building code. We are talking compartmentalizations and all that. But there's so much of interest. As I said in the beginning, there are at least six or eight people uh, come in, and the questions they put in is very amazing. You know. Uh, very simple questions, but uh, there are certain questions that have no answer. Uh, we will uh, try to, we will continue to uh, and, uh, take up these kind of uh, question answer, and it need more time. And I'm sure that we will probably take it up uh, more constructive way and try to answer these questions. So before we conclude, I have very interesting uh, uh, news to we, you know, one is my dear panelists also to know that. Uh, in this last couple of months during COVID, we all, uh, you know, brainstormed that a building need to come together. All the uh, societies need to come together. You know, buildings are getting integrated. It is becoming IoT. The building itself is becoming smart. So how do we uh, bring in everybody in the same? I have something very interesting to show you. Uh, it's a voiceover. Then I think after that, Mr. V. Suresh will just uh, uh, pitch in to show you something. This is something... My friend Ravi Shankar has uh, 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 given the voice over into this. Uh, hopefully, I should I'll be able to uh, play this. Where is this uh, share screen? So context, but uh, na. So context, but our straight here. What you what about? Yes, sir. But, uh, I need yeah, to. You people. There are 158 people there. So tell the context. Then they will hear all that. Mm, show all the windows. I've showed. Okay, here is the small audio. 
Sir, yeah, Krishnan, sir, it is uh, very interesting for you. Yeah, just, just, just a minute. I'm coming. I'm coming. Yeah. I'll try to play. I'll do this thing. Yeah. The building construction industry was just in India. But Can you listen, sir? Can you hear? Yeah, yeah. World yes. Over, it's set to make this a revolutionary change. This is set to take place on the 26th of October 2020. Volume, volume. Volume is let lower. This forum is coming. Yes, sir. Volume is low. Volume is low. I think uh, uh, I'll play Dominic, it. in the interest yeah. of just getting a message directly, we can just tell what it is, the creation of this starter yeah, and just run through the brochure. Yeah, I'll, I'll put construction industry. Okay, I will uh, put the brochure here. Um, Boss, tell what the thing is all about. Yeah, over to you, sir. Why this is there now? Uh, you can see the suddenly thing. drop from 158, 220 to 94 in a minute. Okay. Yeah. Gentlemen, uh, there's a good point which Sandar Varig has told that building has got all these critical services on lifts, air conditioning, and uh, fire and uh, plumbing all together. Or there are critical utility services all have to do their job properly. And the specialists will come in the area of MEP, of mechanical, electrical, plumbing, firefighting, communication. He talked also of the communication uh, cabling coming in a large way, gas supply coming, etc. So a new institution is getting born called FOCUS. It's called FOCUS. It's called the Forum of <coughs> Critical Utility Services, wherein all concerned dealing with all the services will work together. They all come in the same building area where the architects and the civil engineers will work. Along with this, the mechanical, electrical, plumbing, firefighting, and also communication people work, and also the technology providers will come there. So the launch of this particular great institution is starting on the 26th of this month. All institutions dealing with different verticals of that, they're all part of this particular big movement there. So focus is going to be a new area. So it all put their act together in coordination, and integration, and they're able to make an impact in the particular sector. So all the 600 people who are registered over there, like to send a special invitation to for them to participate. 26 is Vijay Dashmi Day, but uh, I, at 7 p.m. is the event, which is going to be a virtual event, and the details will be shared with all the people who are registered. So the uh, so the info, that's a detailed brochure which uh, is being shown. They got specialists. Uh, dealing with about 20 odd uh, verticals to deal with electrical installation, lift installation, fire fire safety, all those details are people work into it. How you can put your act together, Tarmel to come most importantly, and not work as verticals, each one of them, and not understanding what's interactive because they have to take the XYZ space in a three dimensional space, each have to find a space for each of the pipeline or installations or whatever, they got to work together for ensuring safety, efficiency, productivity, and overall quality of life for the people. Simple. So, so please all, join. All the, yeah, what he's saying is on the society like FSAI, FPA, CREDI, Council of Architects, and ISRAE. So, all the society need to come together on the platform. We need to have a provision to where we can have a dialogue, understand the concept. So, this is the objective yeah. of this. Yeah, Arun, uh, sorry, Dominic. There's a very good suggestion which has come from uh, uh, Arun Kumar and also told by, which is also told by uh, Krishnan. They said definitely continue the session with the same team, say in two weeks' time. Maybe continue the particular one more round. That's what Krishnan also said. So take this agenda forward. There's a very good suggestion which you've got, good feedback which you've got, and see that whatever the remaining question will, we'll structure it a little more so that no repetition comes. If it's the same topic, too many people ask. Put it together on this issue. So many people are raised questions. We can have response coming. I have one more say. If not two weeks, three or three week early, four or week early, it will be good to have that one more round. Okay? Oh, I'm sure I have Mr. Dear Krishnan a lot of questions. He loves to answer. I love Mr. Tatosh Varik who helped me to you know combine and put this all in order. And Abhay, I would leave it with you to whether we can continue this. Uh, say after two weeks, at your convenience, we can have it. But more constructive way, you know, we can only select. We, we need only to repeat those questions what we have answered today. Maybe we can say part two, part two of National Board, part four uh, as a webinar, 
I am sure that you will not say no to me when we invite you from the end of November. We can have, and by then we can have uh, questions well, uh, uh, you know, uh, compiled and answered to those uh, questions which are already here. So I wanted to thank you. It's 1:15. I am sorry to hold you for so long, from 10:30 to 1:15. I am grateful for your patience. I'm lovely to have you all, sir. May God bless you, give you good health, and stay safe. I look forward to see you again, sir. And I will speak to you one month to one later. Thank you very much. God bless you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Dominic. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.